So this is part two of creating the bar funnel chart. And what we have so far here is this line. I want to make sure that this line goes down here, go all the way down here, go here and then up. So how do we do this? Well, let's scroll down back to our plugin and we're going to work on this. So what I want to do here in this plugin is uh, continue on. But if I refresh, you can see here, all right, interesting. It grabs the height here automatically. So it understands the height. So what I want to do now is how do we get then to the next point here? So we have this line here and we say here plus 100. Of course, I don't want that. What I do want is going to data point number one. That is basically going down there. Oh, um, let's see here. Line two, data point one. No, that is correct. However, what we need to do here is, of course, on the X value as well. So you can see it goes down here, but we need to go there. All right. What is an issue here, of course, is this line should start or end here. So how do we do that? Well, we have the bar thickness, or basically the 50% of that. And we can say here on the X value minus the bar thickness. By doing that, we go down there nicely. So now what I want to, I want to go to the very bottom. So how do we do this? Well, for the bottom, we can use here this bottom uh, value. So what I'm going to say here, let's get another line too. Put it in here, and we're going to say here for the bottom, it will be the Y value, the bottom. Save, refresh, there we are. Once we did that, I want to move here to this part, and basically it's quite similar. We can grab this one again, but then what we need to do here, we need to say here, data zero, or data point zero. So we go there, all right, we get this here, we need to just fix that. And for that is, of course, because the bar thickness, I want to say plus, because we're in the center, plus goes more to the right. Save that, refresh, there we are. So now I can go up here, or what you could do is very simple. We have this begin path. What I can say here now is ctx.close path, which will automatically close that line. There we are. As you can see here, what is happening here is this line is not really matching nicely, and here down as well. And here we need to have like a solid line as well. So what I'm going to do is go up here, comma, I'll say your border skipped false, save that. So we get a solid line here down. All right. You can see here, here, this is one pixel line and this is a one pixel line. So we need to deduct one pixel here and deduct the pixel here, or basically add a pixel here. So it will go down. And this one is a deduction because then it will go up. So we're going to scroll down here. We have here the uh, position on the Y. We're going to work on the Y. And we said here we need to add up because the Y here has to go down one. So we say here plus one pixel. Then here we can also say plus one pixel. And then here we're going to say for the bottom minus one pixel. Minus one pixel. Save that. Refresh. And now we look. Now it looks like it's perfectly matched. The one pixel is based on, of course, the border with here. If this would be four pixels, different story, of course, or surprisingly, it fits nicely. So, all right. So I'll take that one as a plus. So now we have this here. Let's fill up the inner part. So I'm going to scroll down here and then just say here, what's the color we would like to assign this? So we have the begin path here. What I can say here is ctx dot um, stroke style for the border color. And what I want to do is I just want to extract the color that's matching with this index here. And the next one would be based on whatever the color is of the bar. So I'm going to say a data dot data sets index zero. And then I'm going to say here border color. And then here, let's do first zero. Later on, we have to soft code this, of course. Save that. Refresh. Now we get this and it starts to look quite decent. So what I want to do next is to fine tune a little bit more. We have this here. Uh, let's fill up the colors inside. So I'm going to say here, ctx.fill style with capital S. And then here we just grab the same thing, except now we can say here, maybe border color, background color, something, uh, background color. Save that. There we are. 
Oh, of course. So it doesn't work net yet. Why it doesn't work? Because we only have the stroke command, not the fill command. Because it doesn't draw anything without this command. So I'm going to say a fill, save, refresh. There we are. And maybe this color is not really the most suitable one. So we could say here a grayish color just for now. So we say RGBA or let's make it the dark color. But then we say here transparency of 0.2, I guess. That should be more than enough. Oh, RGBA is a string variable. Save, refresh. There we are, and that looks quite decent. So now we have this. In the next video, we want to make sure it will apply on every other item.